everybody. Um, second day afternoon. Excited to see you here. Like, move your arms a little bit. Feel a little bit awake. I see you doing it here. I appreciate that. Um, as Eric said, my name is Elena Rowell. I am a senior manager on our product marketing team, and I am super excited today to talk to you about our Action Hub. So. The goal of the Action Hub and of actions in general from Looker is to magnify the impact of really the work that you've already done, of the governance and the custom metrics that you've already built in Looker, and give you ways to use that data beyond Looker. You can think about it this way, is that you've centralized all your data, you have this wonderful platform on top, now what? Um, and the Action Hub hopes to add a lot of options for the now what. So there are three buckets that Action Hub use cases fall into. The first is securely and reliably sending governed data sets to other systems. Um, and I am going to have our customer, Elevate Labs, come on stage after this, and he's going to tell you about how they do that with Braze. The next is to trigger workflows in other systems based on these unified metrics in Looker. Um, and we're going to have two gentlemen from Alto come on and talk about how they use the Slack action for that. And the final use case that we see is really like bringing routine tasks into Looker to close that loop between finding an insight and actually doing something about it. So without further ado, let's dive into these use cases. So first off, we have secure and reliably sending governed data to other systems. So what does this mean? Why does this matter? The way that I like to think about it is thinking about Looker as a data source and as an option for you for all of your other tools. Um, so it has. Looker often has data that you cannot access otherwise. Maybe it's your transactional systems and you only have access to the marketing data. Um, additionally, look, data in Looker is fresh and it's pre-modeled and it's reliable. So it's a great source to use to feed other systems. Um, and finally, all of our favorite custom metrics, customer health scores, things like that, all tend to live in Looker. And these custom metrics that are bringing together these different data sources are super powerful to power other uh, workflows. So all in all, if you have any tool or technology that you leverage today, and there's something in your head that you're like, oh, man, I wish I could access this data in that system, this is really where we try and come in with this. So some use cases that we see for this actions are customers sending data and attributes to systems like Segment and MParticle uh, to then feed out to their larger um, technology ecosystems, or building data science workflows and building models based off this governed data in tools like Augur AI and Data Robot. Um, another great use case of this is using Braze. Um, and to talk specifically about that, I am going to bring on Jesse from uh, Elevate Labs, and he's going to dive into exactly what they're doing. There we go. All right. So uh, I hope you guys are uh, eagerly anticipating these slides after that long wait here. Uh, I got a lot of fun stuff to share with you all. Um, cool. So as I was mentioning, uh, product marketing at Elevate uh, sits at the intersection of data analytics and uh, product marketing. Uh, sorry, uh, product marketing and data analytics are part of the Elevate growth team. And uh, what I'm here to talk to you about today is um, the integration of Looker and Braze through Looker's Action Hub, uh, allowing you to power your uh, user communications, your marketing campaigns, uh, with the complex segmentation and targeting abilities that Looker gives you through use of your Looker data. So um, for those of you who are not familiar with Braze, Braze is a customer engagement platform marketing automation tool that uh, covers all of your user communications, emails, push notifications, in-app messages, uh, among other things. And uh, for those of you who have used uh, Braze before, you're probably familiar with the fact that Braze already comes with its own set of robust segmentation tools. Um, you can segment on in-app behaviors, events, and attributes that are set on the user. 
you can segment on uh, marketing re-engagement and retargeting, attribution, acquisition attribution, among other things. Um, but at the same time, Braze is not a BI tool. It's a marketing automation tool. So you're going to get to a point in your marketing and your communications where you're going to run into a limit around how much you can segment and how intelligently you can segment your user base. And that's where the integration comes in. So what Braze does well in targeting from a base state, um, you have a mobile app or you have a, uh, a web app. Um, you have events that are firing off based on your user's, your user's journey within that app and their particular behaviors. So game started, game completed, uh, attributes that set state, like game completed equals five. Um, and those will get sent to Braze. You can easily segment on those. But what if you want to segment on something like um, purchasing uh, behaviors and complex purchasing behaviors? So on the base state, sending a purchase completed event from the app, that's easy. Is paid user true? That follows directly from that, and is something that's easy for Braze to segment straight out of the box. But what if you wanted to segment on something like renewing in month one off of a subscription, or churning off of month two? Uh, much more complex behavior that typically ends up being handled by your back end, not by something that's in your app itself. It all depends on your implementation, but in all likelihood, that may be the case. And the way that you might typically get that data into your, uh, into your Braze instance or into your customer engagement tool is going to be like this. Uh, engineering costs, expensive pipelines, engineering time, overhead that you have to maintain, and QA when things go wrong. Um, usually the default solution, not exactly the best and most fun solution to go with. So what's the alternative to that? The Action Hub with Looker and Braze gives you a connection between the data that you already have and already have structured in the way that you like to consume it from Looker into, uh, into Braze. And from these complex behaviors like renewal month one or cancellation month two, you could set attributes, you could set events that end up helping you to trigger off communications that follow from those more complex points in the user's lifecycle. Um, so the way this works inside Looker, uh, very straightforward. Uh, once you have it set up, you run a query. You get your set of user IDs from that query. You send it from the contextual menu in your Looker um, UI. Set a label for that action that you want or that attribute that you want set in Braze. And then fire it off, and you have a custom attribute that you can then segment on from Braze and use it for email communications, push campaigns, whatever the case may be. So um, sky's the limit in terms of use cases for this when it comes to what you can do to supercharge your communication strategy with this. Uh, we already went over some of the purchasing renewal configurations that you can get out of this. Uh, this is especially useful if you have a, a wide permutation of renewal and purchasing uh, elements, trials, discounts, different subscription durations, um, localized pricing, things along those lines. Uh, personas, so you're going to have certain demographics, certain behaviors of users that you're going to want to segment on, and you use this for design purposes or for product purposes. You can use this to better identify, target, and communicate with those audiences for surveys or UX research. And super user and dormancy definitions. So what do you consider active for a user? Uh, 10 plus games in the past week, for example. Uh, how do you find those users? How do you automatically keep that up to date? And uh, target communications very specifically to that definition. Um, and beyond this, ad hoc email lists. You can get it from survey collection, beta user groups from test flight, um, a lot of other uh, things you can, you can uh, use this for. There's also integrations between Braze and Facebook if you want to use Looker to power uh, custom audiences for acquisition campaigns. So. Uh, when it comes to your marketing communications, you really don't want to be hindered by how personalized and segmented you can get when targeting your audiences. Uh, with the Looker and Braze Action Hub integration, it gives you all of what you need in order to uh, take the powerful segmentation you already have in your BI tool and apply it to the user communications that you're able to do through Braze. So um, thank you for your time and listening. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Glad to answer anything uh, you may be interested in about this. Thanks, y'all.
awesome job. Okay, so there are three types of actions. We've gotten through one, and we're going to hope that the rest, the other two, are much smoother. Uh, all right. So the next type of action that I want to talk about is triggering workflows in other systems based off of the data that you have in Looker. So the way to think about this again is that anytime you say to yourself, like, oh man, I wish that I knew when X happened because I would do Y, Looker knows when X happens. So like, how can we power the Y through Looker? As Everybody should hopefully know Looker in data, look, data in Looker is fresh and accurate, so it's great to power things. Um, and it means that workflows that are maybe time sensitive um, can be powered directly from Looker. So our customers are using this in a number of different ways. Um, but if you think about like a service outage that you might have, sending that, flagging that service outage in Looker, and then being able to send the data to Marketo of the customers that had the outage with the fields that that Marketo template needs to be able to tell them what the outage was and have that happen programmatically, that's one of the use cases for this. Or if you have something, maybe something goes awry. I don't know why trigger actions, I always think that something goes wrong, but it's really the best use case. Um, but if something does go wrong, um, automatically shipping that data set to a cloud storage option like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, so it's ready and waiting for your team to dig in when they need to know a little bit more about it. Another great use case for this is sending uh, data to Slack, which I'm going to try this again. Uh, I'm going to bring Jacob and Adam from Alto on stage to tell you about all about how they are doing this. Let's give them a war round, warm round of applause. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Hey, guys. I'm Adam. I'm Alto's uh, product strategy and analytics manager. Yeah, and I'm uh, Jacob Wilson. I'm senior architect, and I focus mostly on data and platforms for Alto. Awesome. So we're here with Alto, an on-demand ride-hailing service based out of Dallas. Uh, we're here today to talk about how we've been able to leverage Looker's Slack and Twilio integrations to really empower our operating team. So similar to other players in the space, our app allows customers to book on-demand rides. A couple of the things that differentiate us are our professional employee drivers and our company-managed fleet of vehicles. These differentiators allow us to deliver safe, consistent, and high-quality rides. However, as you can imagine, there are tons of variables out there on the road. And keeping our operating team up to date on all of the occurrences can get pretty complex and challenging. This is where we've been able to leverage Looker's Slack action to notify our operating team of any occurrences so they can problem solve them in real time. Um, so let's go through some examples. Imagine you're booking a trip home after a night out, and you get matched to a car completing a trip at a nearby restaurant, uh, when suddenly that passenger decides he doesn't feel Italian today and wants to go somewhere across town. In this situation, you're not stuck waiting for your car to go complete that trip and come back. Our dispatchers will be notified via the Slack action and then quickly work to match you to another vehicle. This is a specific example, but our operating team really cares about staying on top of everything happening on the road. So every time that there's a deviation from our planned vehicle, our vehicle plan, they want to know about it so they can assess the situation and take action. The Slack integration has been absolutely helpful in helping to distribute this. So as you can imagine, um, which uh, we hadn't mentioned before, uh, we are just now reaching our one-year anniversary um, of operating at Alto. And with that, we have grown from a very small team to a slightly less small team, but still really small. Uh, so one of the benefits that we've gotten out of Looker is our development team has been able to continue to focus on the things that are really important to our customers. And we haven't had to invest a lot in all the things that are really important to our ops team, unfortunately. But Looker has come in and filled the gap so that our development team can focus on other things. Uh, so you can imagine that we're a complete word salad. As a new company, as a startup, we get to use all of the coolest new technology, Looker included. Um, and we'll uh, go ahead and uh, look at some of our other uh, use cases and talk about some of the ways that we laid things out architecturally. Yeah. So alongside the Slack action, we also leverage the Twilio integration to reach out to our passengers when necessary. 
Looker dashboards are just another tool that our operating team and dispatchers use to keep them informed of what's going on on the road. Then if an, there's an occurrence that you know, they want to reach out to our passenger, they can do that from the Twilio integration baked in. So the uh, great thing about the Looker platform, as I'm sure all of you know, is you can very quickly bring all of your different uh, disparate data sources together. So for us, that amounts to a, a data warehouse that lives in BigQuery, and then we have operational data systems that live in AWS. Uh, and that even gets joined up together with additional customer information coming out of things like HubSpot, Facebook, uh, our ads platforms, et cetera, and also our analytics uh, tools. So we've built out a handful of different dashboards for our dispatch function uh, and our support function. And all of those integrate back in with tools that we're already using to run our day-to-day -day business, Slack and Twilio. Uh, Twilio is a big part of how we connect to our customers whenever they're on rides or prior to or post a ride. Uh, and of course, it's the easiest way to reach out to somebody if something's going wrong. So this is an example of our actions flow. So today, what we do is we pull all of our real-time data uh, directly from our operational uh, uh, data sources uh, that are replicated through AWS. And we combine that in with some of our other information about our customers, lifetime uh, ride counts, things like that. The, the different elements that you need to know whenever you're reaching out to a customer, ha have they been promoted before? Do you need to uh, issue additional promotions? And we can trigger a handful of different actions. So uh, Adam's already alluded to in our customer support case. If something's not going right for a customer, if we detected a problem with their, uh, with their ride, we actually get an alert into our support departments. They, uh, they see that on Slack. They hit the Twilio action and then send off a pre-baked message uh, out through uh, uh, text uh, or sometimes initiate a call. Over on the dispatch side, uh, our operations team can keep track of, because we have a significant amount of telemetry coming in from our vehicles, uh, we can actually track placement of vehicles, see if they're behind plan or if they're in the wrong place, and then immediately issue commands out to both our drivers and to let the passengers know that uh, things are coming around and we'll be out to get you soon. Awesome. So with that, if uh, you're ever in Dallas, make sure to try us, and hopefully we'll be coming to a city soon near you. Awesome. And, Thank uh, you, guys. Back to Elena. Fantastic. The final type of action that I want to get into is one that's a little bit different than the first two buckets. The first two buckets are really about taking data sets in Looker and sending them to other places, other tools, other workflows, whatever that may be. The third bucket of actions is really about like actually doing the work in Looker. It's the, actually the one that's the most action. Um, so it's the idea of seeing something and actually doing something right when it's there. Um, so the way I think about it is fewer tabs, fewer distractions. Um, switching between SaaS tools is no fun. Um, and oftentimes, like an insight that you find from Looker from, let's say, your Zendesk data is going to cause you to do something in Zendesk. So why should you have to go to Zendesk to do that? Um, this allows you to streamline processes and workflows and find insights and take action in Looker. So one of the actions that we have for this is Airtable. Um, a lot of customers will use this that they'll, they'll run their projects in Airtable. Um, but when they see that like maybe something has been met, that they can like, then change the status of a project, they can do that directly in Looker and then continue with their workflow in Looker from there. I also want to touch on, though, two actions that we have that are really, uh, they really, the world is your oyster with these two actions. Um, the actions for Trey and for Zapier, if you guys aren't familiar with those two technologies, definitely check them out. Um, because basically what you can do is you can send the data to them and then they can do anything, anytime, anywhere with it. Um, and one of the things that you can do with them is create these custom in Looker, in cell actions. Um, we've been working on a lot of them actually and so we're hoping to post some of our like templates for them to discourse in the next few months. Um, but one, like the things that we see is like you have a rep who's underperforming you want to meet with that rep because you need to talk to them about why they're underperforming, and you can book that meeting directly from Looker. 
Uh, you need to move a prospect through the funnel. You can book, like, change that Salesforce data in Looker. Or back to the, the idea of Zendesk is you have a chat. You see it's not being processed. You want to switch the owner because you need someone to actually go do something with it. You can do that all in Looker with these custom things that you can build in Zapier and Tray. So one of the things that we also hear is that actions are not super obvious in the product. So I wanted to teach you how to find them. If you go into your Looker and you click on the admin dropdown, you will see this lovely actions button in the platform section. Once you click on that, you'll get taken to the action hub where you'll see a variety of different options for actions that you can enable today. With Looker 7, we're going to continue to deploy more actions. Um, so keep an eye out there if, you're, if you are looking for something. A note on the Action Hub, it's actually a, it's an open source product, and you can run your own Action Hub. Um, so for example, like if you're on premises, you can create your own Action Hub and then use that. Um, but you can also create custom actions, like full-blown send data to whatever the system is. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, there's a ton of documentation on it. But as I said, we're really trying to grow this library so there's more options. So the stack that you choose has more support from Looker, basically. Um, and so if you have a tool, if you are a SaaS product provider and you think, hey, wouldn't my tool be a good action? We probably agree. Um, and we'd love to chat with you about it, because the more that we can make this you know, community and network work together, I think the better off everybody is. <laughs>